Hey friends and welcome back to my channel, Seasonally Productive. I'm Caitlin. If you're new here, I have recently switched from a sewing channel to more of just like our everyday lifestyle channel. But today we're throwing it back to sewing and I'm going to show you what I made in May and June. May was just some baby stuff for my cousin's new little baby boy. So I'm going to show you that now because I actually filmed that before I gave the items to them and it was supposed to be like a sewing for baby kind of video and then it just it just didn't happen. So I'm just going to show you those now and then we'll come back and talk about what I made in June. First up, my cousin and his wife welcomed their second little bub into the world and I decided to make a few things for him. So I made a couple of pairs of shorts. Are these not the sweetest things you have ever seen? This is just basic cotton jersey. This print, I'm sure you've seen it, it's an art gallery print. And then this waistband, I had just some scraps of custom black and white grunge stripe I think from Bare Necessities but I'm sorry if I'm wrong on that and then this one this is a custom print as well I think it's also from Bare Necessities and then just some art gallery jersey fabric but yeah these are super quick so I think this is the Lowland Kids joggers pattern I made the shorts I omitted the pockets just to keep it simple and they're very very quick to sew up elastic and top stitching in the waistband and yeah just itty bitty and adorable and then for him I also made a little bonnet I think this is still available this it might have even been a free pattern I can't remember but it's the pollu it's from polluted pixie I think and it has the option for these little ears so of course I had to add them for him and I used a tie this is upcycled linen fabric from a dress I had made and then the inside I used some scrap uh, remnant the sailboats I had made my son a shirt out of this fabric at one time and really this could be reversible this bonnet if you wanted it to be this one could be if you don't mind the ears being on the inside but I know that uh, she likes the more neutral colors so we went with that and I think it is just so sweet. Oh, and I sewed this up on my grandma's machine, which was also my cousin's grandma. So very kind of special just to have Grandma Pat with us as I was making this. So cute. So the baby, my cousin's baby, the older sister there, firstborn, had her birthday as well. And so I made her up a little shirt. Isn't this the cutest thing? This started out as the ruffle dress and I just clearly just made the bodice but I lengthened it two inches and then I also lengthened the ruffle and I just tapered it to kind of a curve at the bottom so I didn't have to worry about like hemming it at the bottom as well. I did I had to use I would have loved to do the ruffle on the bias but I was working with a very small piece of fabric so I had to cut it on the straight grain and I actually had to join pieces together as well which I princess seamed because you can see the ruffle from both sides and then just hemmed that I did bias binding around the neckline and the arm size and I hand stitched those down which I probably didn't need to but um, it was a nice little touch, I guess, just to make sure I got right in that ditch. And then I hemmed it on my machine. That's how that one turned out. I think it's so sweet. I really hope she likes it. This is a poly fabric. There might be cotton in it. From Minerva. I used this for a project I did for them a while back. And it worked great for this gingham. Awesome for summer. I Honestly, I kind of want a shirt like this for myself. And... Uh, yeah, it might have to happen. Okay, so I can't actually remember if I made this at the very end of May. I think it was the beginning of June. Yeah, it was because it was after the baby stuff and I made it so I could wear it to my friend's um, bachelorette stag at bridal shower. So this is the Hampton dress. I was recently gifted a full access membership for the Cashmerette Club. Uh, the, no obligations, I'm not like asked to share this or anything, but I did decide to make the Hampton dress as my first ever Cashmerette make. There was just a few things I changed to it. 
So from the original dress, the things I changed are, I number one, made it sleeveless. This pattern does allow for sleeve swapping with another pattern of cashmerettes, but I don't have that pattern, so I just decided to omit this to make this a nice summer dress. And then I also added a tear at the bottom of the skirt, which you'll see better, obviously. And the neckline, I ended up doing snaps down the front instead of buttons. And I don't know why I always forget this, but I didn't put one right at the top. I started it lower down. So this was like really gapy. So I ended up just folding it over and making like this V detail here, which I like. Ended up looking all right. I made this straight size 14 in this dress. It is big. So I think I measured into the 12, but then the 14 for waist or else it was 14 and then the 16 for waist. But I ended up making a straight size 14. The waist does fit, but it is an elastic back. So I do feel like I could size down to a 12 and it would probably be fine. The hips are, sorry, Marita here. The hips are big on me. I'm not as curvy as cashmere drafts for. So uh, the next one, again, I will size down and then might even shave out some of the, the width on the hips. It doesn't look bad. I think also if I added pockets in, that might help or else it might make it worse. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comments what you think about that. And the, yeah, the neckline is just, is where I really noticed the, the largeness because there is some excess um, gaping, I guess. So I did end up just kind of taking it in. I took it in at the side seams. This was really gapy, especially because I didn't add those sleeves in. I just omitted them. I did binding around here, or sorry, not bias binding, bias facing around the both arm size and the neckline finishes with a facing and it only gets attached down at the shoulder seam. So I think I've worn it quite a few times now and I think I am going to go back and top stitch the facing down. I think a lot of us can agree that that's always just a better option. Uh, yeah, they, so the dress has princess seams in the bodice and down the paneled skirt. And then it has this waistband around the center, which I typically don't love the look of, but I think with the print of this fabric, it's so busy that you can't notice that waistband anyway. And then it allows for the elastic in the back, which ends up finishing really nicely. I did not add the pockets to this dress because I was out of fabric. I wanted to make sure I had enough for a tear. I just wanted this to be like a really nice and flowy dress. So I added about, what would this be? Maybe a 10 inch tier. It was just what, it, what exactly what I had left of fabric. There's like a few scraps left. So this is almost a zero waist dress. And then I didn't do snaps all the way down. I stopped about mid thigh to add that swishy factor. Actually my son, when I showed him this, when I first put it on, he said that this is my mermaid dress. Okay, the fabric is a cotton, it's like a brushed cotton. I wouldn't quite call it a flannelette, but it's it's definitely got more of a softer hand than say a quilting cotton or a cotton lawn or something like that. So I would I'll call it a brushed cotton. But yeah, I've I've really been enjoying this dress and I've like I said I've worn it to a few events, some my friends bridal event, my niece's graduation, my cousin's graduation, a festival, and I just find it really fun and easy to wear. And I mean, what's better than just throwing on a dress and walking out the door, right? You wear sandals or not. That is one thing I do wish I could have had a couple extra inches at the end of the hem, but uh, it just didn't work out that way. Oh, and speaking of the hem, I did a raw hem because I wanted it longer. It would have been a funny length if I had hemmed this. I mean, I know it could have went to midi, but I really wanted to embrace that long, flowy, bohemian style dress. Yeah, so overall my experience so far with cashmere has been good. I thought the drafting and instructions were done 
fairly well. Um, definitely enough that I will again continue to use my membership. Uh, they have some new patterns that I'm kind of excited to try. So that was that. Other than that, in July here, I mean, I know it's pretty much over, but I have some swimsuits I'm working on, or a swimsuit, I'm trying to get that done, and then I need to alter the dress for my friend's wedding. I am maid of honor, and I have not altered the dress, and the wedding is in two and a half weeks, <laughs> so I need to get to that, and the swimsuits, and that'll probably be it for July, and then in August, I'm hoping to just kind of wrap up what things I have started some alterations, some other summer things, some swimsuits, because then it's already getting into fall sewing and I really haven't even made anything for summer yet. So I need to get on it. But yeah, so thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this little throwback to the sewing content, hoping to do a little bit more of that kind of going forward, what I've been making, if I've been making that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a big thumbs up. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to stick around for more seasonally productive content. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next one. Yay! Bye!